Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and I'll break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, interesting stuff. Uh, this was actually sent to me by a subscriber. Looks like um, Australians are going to be able to buy Bitcoin at the post office. Also, Trump says China controls Bitcoin, and the IRS is soliciting contractors to help examine crypto traders' tax returns. So if you're like me and you pay taxes, which you should, uh, this might be very concerning. Which leads me to a big announcement. I want to say congratulations to CryptoTrader.tax. They are the first and so far the only business I have chosen to work with to have a paid promotional video on this channel. I get 10 to 20 every week and I shut them all down and this is the one that I picked and I'm going to tell you why at the very end. We're going to go over this is actually the software that I am using right now and I have trusted with it to send over to my CPA to use to file my taxes which are going to be due on July 15th and this is actually for everybody. So if you're like me and have made over, oh, I don't know, 20 or so trades over the last three or four years, this might be something you'd be heavily interested in. And also, because of our agreement, you're going to get 20% off just for watching this video. So stick around to the end. I'm going to show you how easy this thing is, how fast it actually works, and how simple it can actually make your whole life. So before we go into that, uh, there was some big news over the past couple days, and we covered that in the last uh, two videos, two stories. And we had things like uh, PayPal came out and Venmo, they're going to, looks like they're going to support buying and selling cryptocurrency. Then we also had CVS, 7-Eleven, and Rite Aid. They're gonna be able, you're gonna be able to buy Bitcoin through these kiosks. And this is just on top of the institutions of Galaxy Digital, Backed and Fidelity who've already been in. So it's all kind of coming together, and this was huge news, and of course, what happened with the price it went down so bitcoin actually lost four percent uh over the last 24 hours it's down 1.8 percent over the last seven days ethereum tethers tether xrp is xrp and down we go so nothing really happened which i gotta tell you uh if this would have happened in 2017 people would have lost their minds however one of one of uh, uh somebody wrote in the comment section they said you know maybe this is just a sign of actual maturity for this space because there is uh you know all this great news going on and actually it's either stagnant or going down i mean maybe that's it uh who knows but i would have thought that huge news like all the things that we just heard of the last two days would have uh, made a dent or at least kept it going uh, along sideways but nope absolutely not actually dropped down anyhow let's jump into today's top story so First up, this was actually submitted to me uh, by Irfan. He's from Australia, and he just said, Hey, Dan, just want to let you know that uh, starting soon, we can buy Bitcoin at the Australian Post Outlets, which I guess is the post office. This is a big deal, especially for Australia, because, and he had to tell me all this, because I have no idea. I'm not from Australia. The post office in America is just a place that you begrudgingly go to to drop off some packages. It's not a big deal, and it's actually owned by the government. It's, it's, it's a government entity. Uh, in Australia, I don't think that's how it is. I could be wrong. So all the people from Australia, let me know where my uh, incorrectness is. But uh, from Irfan, he says, this is huge news. And he says, the post service reached out to 10 million Australian addresses every day and serves more than a million customers within their outlets. And this was from uh, Bitcoin.au or Bitcoin.com.au and says, hey, we've launched a new partnership with the Australian Post thus providing another trusted and secure way to pay for Bitcoin at your local post office. From telegrams and online shopping, Australia Post has led technological and social innovation in the country for over 200 years. When I read that, I'm like, uh, our post office hasn't done that. Uh, so maybe Australia is like way ahead of the curve. Anyhow, it says Australia Post will accept cash and EFT POS payments for digital currency purchases made on the website to their popular post bill pay service. So I guess, again, uh, just like how, how we had talked about uh, yesterday, you know, they're going to have kiosks or ATMs and these CVSs, 7-Elevens and Rite Aids. It's just good advertising. Um, people see the Bitcoin logo and like, hey, what's that? And they ask questions. And hopefully the more they see it, then the more they'll pick it up and actually, you know, get into it. But I can tell you I'm in sales and marketing and people have to see something at least seven to ten times before they get it or actually buy. So, you know, hey, so much the better. Makes sense. I'm happy. Next up. And next, this was a it was an interesting article. And I want to preface this with a big, not a disclaimer, but just a note. And that is that I don't care what side you're on. Uh, if you're a left or right or center, 
this is not a political uh, channel, obviously. This all has to do with cryptocurrency and digital assets. And this is about a book that's coming out by uh, Mr. Bolton here. And uh, it's pretty negative at, as far as Trump goes. But there's some interesting tidbits in here which are true about cryptocurrency and how it relates to like the cftc the sec and i kind of see where things are going and i backed this up uh with some old articles so uh first of all um who wrote this well this is corey johnson well who is corey johnson corey johnson is he's a technology journalist broadcaster hedge fund portfolio manager short seller and growth investor currently an advisor to a handful of technological or technology and biotech companies including brain trust and some other stuff so great this uh lends itself to a little credibility we'll give corey a pass looks like we can uh, listen to what he's saying so again just remember uh, this is not political we're really just here for cryptocurrency so moving down uh bolton here is writing a book or he wrote a book and it's coming out soon and an antidote in bolton's book reveals that president trump has a distaste for bitcoin dating back to at least may 2018 i think we can all remember that he sent a couple tweets out not too long ago talking about bitcoin and how it's not that great makes sense when the president chastised treasury secretary steve mnuchin's approach to the china trade negotiations uh he told him hey don't be a trade negotiator trump allegedly said go after bitcoin and they preface this as for fraud and trump seems to know that china controls bitcoin debatable uh, not debatable that he knows that, debatable that China controls Bitcoin. And Mnuchin doesn't seem to care. Mnuchin never went after Bitcoin. Trump's administration has supported Bitcoin and Ethereum at the expense of American-made cryptocurrencies. And I will say this, um, the whole government uh, has been slow on their feet and just dragging everything. Uh, it's actually passed legislation. Now, we have 21 or maybe 23 bills that are going to be going before Congress as far as cryptocurrency digital assets. So it's going to be a big year as far as regulation goes. But I mean, just the uh, pace of it has been uh, extremely slow. And that is true. And say so this has happened even as China has tightened its grip on Bitcoin and Ethereum mining. So we know that the majority of Bitcoin miners are in China right we know that uh, these like bitmain these different types of places uh, they are all centralized in china but as far as like the mining pool uh, i'm not for sure because the the miners that i talk to they have told me like look we can go to any mining pool we want to we can switch off at any time right so in this in this situation like uh, they could actually just pick up and leave and go to another, another mining pool however i don't know if that's really feasible and we'll get to that in a bit anyhow this all started back in June 14, 2018, when the SEC's Director of the Division of Corporation Finance, that's a long title, Bill Hinman announced a surprising new policy toward the two crypto securities at a Yahoo Finance conference in San Fran. Hinman went on stage before Bolton. When he says just me, he means Bolton. As with Bitcoin, applying the disclosure regime of the federal securities laws to current transactions in Ether would seem to add little value. This is Hinman talking. He said further, arguing that they might have been securities at the start, but had eventually achieved decentralization from any one enterprise. And this seems to be the test that governments and SEC and CFTC are actually putting in. Has a cryptocurrency achieved decentralization? So when we take a look at that, and we want to talk about the Howey test. And the Howey test is, you know, there was it's, it was created back in the 1940s, I mean, a long time ago. And there's four criteria. I'm no, I know you're probably sick of, of hearing about these things, but let's go over real quick for those who don't know. Uh, four things that would deem it a security. Offering involves a monetary investment, expectation of profits, it's a common enterprise, and any profit come from third party. So again, how we test is back in the 1940s, but now what we see is that it really comes to a decentralized test. Are these projects decentralized or not? And we scroll down real quick. Uh, here is Bitcoin's how we test. So the monetary investment, yeah, but not initially. Profits, yeah, but not initially. Common enterprise, no. Profits of third party, no. So investors weren't necessarily expecting to profit from Bitcoins at first with many early investors simply being interested in the concept of peer-to-peer -peer digital cash. So it's not a security. The SEC ruled on October 1st, 2019 that Bitcoin is not a security, saying, among other things, we did not believe 
that current purchasers of Bitcoin are relying on the managerial and entrepreneurial efforts of others to produce a profit. It is decentralized, right? Now they took a look at Ethereum and they said, hey, the SEC has yet to make a final ruling, but it seems that it does not consider Ethereum to be a security. Again, William Hidman said, based on my understanding of the present state of Ether, the Ethereum network and its decentralized structure currently offers and sales of Ether are not securities transactions. By applying the Howey test, the SEC found that Ethereum is now decentralized to the extent that the third-party profits category does not apply, nor does Ethereum represent a common enterprise, making the network and Ether tokens free from securities. Makes sense, right? But here's a problem. The CFTC Commodities Trade Commission has stated that Ethereum is most likely a commodity, not a security, but that when the proof of stake or POS comes in with Ethereum 2.0, it could then be considered a security because the proof of stake method of consensus validates transactions, creates blocks by granting validation rights to stakeholders with a large sum of funds, which could constitute a common enterprise and a monetary investment. So that's one of those things. POS sounds great, right? Because we can stake and everything else. But if the SEC and CFTC comes behind and says, no, 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 now it's a security. Now we got more problems, but we will see. And then there's another, another interesting tidbit here was EOS. That was actually deemed a security at one point. EOS raised $4 billion, wow, in a record-breaking ICO between 2017-2018. The SEC found the ERC-20 tokens used to raise the funds uh, was actually a security, and they fined them $24 million. But here's the kicker. Uh, the ruling applies only to the initial ERC-20 tokens distributed in the ICO, not to the EOS tokens themselves afterwards. EOS tokens that are now in circulation, they are decentralized, so they don't care about that stuff. So out of all this hoopla and everything else, you know what uh, that fine they got hit with, with $24 million? Uh, that accounted to 0.58% of the total amount raised. So yeah, the SEC really came hard down on them, didn't they? But in the end, they did say it is decentralized. But it's worth noting that uh, we know that Bitcoin is heavily decentralized. There's thousands of nodes, Ethereum the same way. But it's worth noting that EOS only has 21 blockchain producers, uh, not the thousands of nodes like we're used to. So just keep an open mind. So uh, as far as the SEC is concerned, it doesn't take much to be decentralized. That's all I'm saying. Moving on, now we're talking about Hinman. Like a priest at a confession, Hinman was confessing forgiveness and blessing when he was talking at that Yahoo Finance um, seminar. He, Bolton said, I stood in the wings with my mouth agape. The next guy next to me showed his Coinbase account. The price of Bitcoin and Ether soared because he was telling everybody, hey, it's a commodity. It seemed more were to come. Over time, there may be other sufficiently decentralized networks and systems, uh, Hidman said, where regulating the tokens or coins that function on them as securities may not be required. The SEC followed up with more institutionalized support for Bitcoin and Ethereum on November 16th with a statement of digital asset securities issuance and trading and what about all the other crypto platforms like cardano eos litecoin xrp they didn't say anything else it was all bitcoin and ethereum so take that as you see it this had the effect of drawing the crypto communities into three groups bad guys good guys and everybody else if you're a developer an investor and everything else what would you do where would you place your bets and it's a good question um i think some people are more risk takers and they think it's not going to be uh considered a security and they go wherever they want to go seeing this china has doubled down on support of bitcoin and either mining on its shores while the chinese government was giving mixed signals about its support of blockchain it was quietly allowing miners access to some of the cheapest power in the world for the mining of bitcoin and ether the result as much as 65 percent of bitcoin hash power resides within china and that is irrefutable we can take a look at all the different types of data and graphs out there and it's the truth right now China owns a lion's share of the hash power. That's just how it is. Um, and CoinShare said it's the highest we've seen since we began our network monitoring in late 2017. So in 2019, here we have it right here. I don't know exactly what it is right now, but I'm pretty sure it's around there or probably a little bit higher. Much of that was in the Sichuan province with its 90,000 megawatts of hydroelectric power. Sichuan alone produces 50% of global hash rate. One place, 54% said coin shares with the remaining 11 percent split more or less evenly between yunnan xinjiang and inner Mong mongolia hope i pronounced that right the location of ethereum's hash rate is not as closely studied but mining pool concentrations suggest, suggest that ether 2 is dominated by chinese miner so here's the risk 
With control, this is what he says here. With control of over 51% of the Bitcoin and Ethereum network, China could direct miners to enter malicious blocks onto the chain, ban certain payments, reverse transactions, and generally wreak havoc. So let's go over this. I don't think that's right. Um, again, I've talked to a lot of different miners, and if they're in a mining pool, they're able to say, look, I don't want to be in this pool, and they can pull out and become a, or go to another mining pool anytime they want to. So all that hash power that they're using uh, doesn't work out, right? So even if you have these these huge conglomerates, you have the bit mains and the ant pools and all those different places, and they have a bunch of different miners there, um, they also are relying, as I've understood it, for different miners outside. And those miners can go and pick up at any time, at any point, and just hightail it. So I don't know if that is totally correct. I don't see it is, but let me know in the comment section if I am if I am wrong in in my assertion of what is actually going on here. However, I will say this. I mean, if you have all this different concentration of hash power in one place, it can't be good in some way, shape, or form. Because if you have, I mean, super cheap um, hydroelectricity, uh, let's say it's at, there's an article here for three cents per kilowatt hour. And I've seen it, uh, you know, go to like two and maybe one and a half cents. If you have that thing, usually miners go to where it's the cheapest, right? Um, they're like, well, we want to profit the most amount. So if we have a place where it's super cheap hydroelectric power, we're going to go to that place. So to just pick up and leave, would you actually do that? Because uh, would it be financially an incentive for you to do so? Especially if you're making, you know, so much profits at one place uh, in China and you could pick up and go someplace else, why would you do that? So that's my big question to all the miners. Hopefully you guys can answer that. Um, but I will say this, as far as like China's hash rate and hash power, there is one shining brightness i think for me as an american and that is from layer one so if you're not familiar and i've talked about this before that layer one which is going to be built in west texas where i'm at right now uh, they are going to be building a huge gigawatt factory which is backed by billionaire peter Thiel. and this article states why west texas because thanks to a glut of natural gas and a forest of wind turbines uh, it's the cheapest in the world uh, even cheaper than in china so already this year, West Texas seen a string of 100 degree days. I can attest to that. It's going to be 103 today, which is awesome. So what these guys do, layer one, is they actually submerge it in some type of liquid, mineral oil, or something like that to overclock the processors. It's a, it's a pretty smart way to do things. Just like how uh, gamers used to do it back in the day, uh, liquid-cooled uh, type of motherboards and graphics cards. So, the, But here's the, here's the crux of it. Here's the big thing layer one is entered into a so-called demand response contracts whereby at a minute's notice they will shut down all the machines and instead allow their 100 megawatt load to flow onto the grid we act as an insurance underwriter for the energy grid if there is an, an insufficiency of supply we can shut down the best part is they get paid whether a grid emergency occurs or not just for their willingness to shut in bitcoin production layer one collects an annual premium equating to 19 dollars per megawatt hour of their expected power demand or about 17 million given layer one's roughly 25 dollars per megawatt hour long-term contracted costs this gets their all-in power price down to less than one penny per kilowatt hour one penny so if you're a miner i'm just gonna say um you go to where it is financially responsible for you because you probably have a family to take care of, mouse to feed, all that good stuff. But uh, when layer one comes up, uh, maybe that would be uh, more of an enticing type of uh, place for mining as opposed to mining in China. Just saying. All right, let's finish up. States here, China certainly would like to dethrone the dollar as the world's reserve currency, says Gordon Chang, author of The Coming Collapse of China. Controlling Bitcoin will be important. Controlling Bitcoin would give China additional leverage over global capital markets. The ultimate goal is to dominate everything. And of course, I think, let's be honest, that's what a lot of countries are trying to do. It's fair to say, though, if the future of money is digital, the Trump administration is ceding the future of money to China. And uh, honestly, I got to agree with that one because... Look, China is has already produced the digital yuan. We did a two-part series on that about how it's already out there and how it's already going to dominate. However, the dollar is still the strongest. Uh, let's just let's just be clear on that. It is still be will be the reserve currency. But once you start to slip a little bit and you see a little bit of weakness and little things coming about, it doesn't take long before you to tumble down, and um, that could potentially happen. And especially, I mean, I got to tell you, digital yuan sounds 
pretty awesome just like a digital dollar would sound pretty awesome and hopefully they can get that going but at the rate of speed at which government works i don't see it actually happening anytime too fast all right let me know what you think in the comment section let's move on to our next article so this one this one is scary uh, i saw this and uh, of course the irs always makes me nervous because i have been an audit before and if you haven't it's super scary and it makes you super stressed out uh don't be like me don't go through an, an audit and all it takes yeah, just like for me was just a couple of errors that uh me and the cpa had done actually and we had just overlooked some things so you have to make sure your taxes are right now when i went through that audit uh it took a week and you have to get everything every scrap of paper every different uh bank statement everything that you sold to put in everything and uh you know at the very end you're just lucky when you're like oh i like to pay a couple more grand great i'm happy uh, but that can happen and it can happen at any time. So uh, do your taxes. And this is going to play into our next part about CryptoTrader.tax. Anyhow, the IRS is seeking third-party contractors to help it assess whether certain U.S. taxpayers have properly paid taxes on their crypto holdings. According to email posted online by CryptoTrader.tax and verified by Coindesk, that's the big crux here. It wasn't just made up. IRS Assistant Deputy Commissioner John Cardone said the agency is looking for contractors to assist our revenue agents in calculating taxpayers gains or losses as a result of their transactions involving virtual currency at least one other company in the space which asked not to be named also received that same email the irs can confirm the authenticity of the email the agency told coindesk the call for contractors comes as the irs is paying increasing attention to the crypto space having issued its first guidance of the matter last year in october and adding a question about digital currency ownership to this year's return form which looks exactly like this which you will all see on the top of the 1040 easy form or 1040 sr uh, and just states hey at any time in 2019 did you receive sell send exchange or otherwise acquire any financial interest in any virtual currency so uh kind of got you on that one so you have to answer yes if you're, if you're watching this video pretty good chance you're gonna have to say yes so it states i don't think people will be pleased about this however those who have been accurately reporting their crypto taxes will have nothing to worry about said david kemmerer ceo of crypto trader a software platform used for reporting kemmerer emphasized his firm would not be pursuing the contract our dedication is 100 percent to our users we have no plans of working with the government in this regard he said and that is one of the big reasons why i chose to work with crypto trader so look here's the deal crypto trader actually reached out to me and we struck a deal and we struck a deal and i said you know what uh you are the only company that i would actually consider using or promoting on my channel and i get a ton of them every like we talked about in the very beginning but i'm not here to promote some type of crazy leverage trading or some type of other thing that is promoted out there i just don't believe in that and that's okay if you want to go that route and do leverage trading and gamble it's gambling sorry it is um, you can do that but that's not my thing my thing is there are necessities and there are things that you want and taxes are a necessity and this is for me something that i needed to have now i will just tell you this if you just have like a couple of trades and you haven't sold anything this isn't for you that you don't need this this is this is super simple but if you are like me and maybe over the years have made more than 20 50 100 different types of trades and transactions you're going to want to do this because if you're at a point in your life where you don't really feel like i don't have the time to pour over a spreadsheet and look at all this information and uh, try to get it right and not get audited then i'm just going to tell you this is for you so i'm just going to show you how it works i'm going to show you how it works for me so let's watch this video meet gary gary is a cryptocurrency trader who like many others starts off by casually investing in bitcoin Getting his taxes done for these Bitcoin trades is no problem as he can do them by hand. But as Gary starts making more and more trades across multiple exchanges, his tax reporting quickly turns into a nightmare. Exchanges can't provide him with accurate tax reports, so Gary stays up late into the night trying to calculate the dollar value of his cryptocurrencies each time he traded one for another. He doesn't get very far. Thankfully, there is an easier way. CryptoTrader.tax is a tax reporting platform built to make crypto taxes less painful. Instead of spending hours sifting through spreadsheets, Gary simply imports his trades from his cryptocurrency exchanges directly into the platform. 
This data gets sorted and run through the CryptoTrader.tax engine. With the click of a button, Gary receives his tax report that he can file himself, send to his tax professional, or upload into his preferred tax filing software. Get started for free at CryptoTrader.tax. Okay, so let me know, does that apply to you? If it does, you probably wanna stick around because uh, it's going to help you out tremendously like it helped me. I've already used it, I've already gone through it, I've already submitted it to my um, CPA, and um, it saved me a ton of time. And if you're like me and don't wanna waste time, then this is for you. Also, um, in the description of every one of the videos from now on, there's going to be a link, and it's gonna look like this. If you click on that link, you can sign up for CryptoTrader.tax. And if you put in Dan on the coupon code, it gives you 20% off. So not a bad deal. So let's take a look at the actual site. So just so you know, these are either people that have mentioned it or they partner with. So it's a legitimate place. Um, these are all the different types of crypto exchanges. We'll go over that in a bit. And these are all the forms that'll spit out. They've actually, uh, they have a partnership uh, with TurboTax and they have international tax support, what's called tax loss harvesting, which I'm gonna go over uh, right now, actually. So let's just log in. I'm gonna log in, I'm gonna show you my reports. Not everything, but uh, you know, the good stuff. So when you first come in here, let's back up. Let's back up number one, select exchanges. So here's all my exchanges that I actually use. Binance, Coinbase, Coinbase Pro, Huobi Global. I know, Huobi, right? But uh, remember, this is I'm doing things back in 2017. I'm actually going back to make sure I didn't miss anything. So you just click the ones that you you have, and if you and if it's not listed here, which would be rare, uh, you can just download uh, the CSV or Excel spreadsheet. You just ask them for that, and it just pops in the data. Um, so we're gonna click next. Now, if you're gonna go through Binance there's an API and API secret. And all these different ones that I, I selected are all right here, right? So it's gonna tell you exactly how to do it. So for Binance, it's gonna say, what, do you, what do you, where do I get this API key in secret? You click on this. So it says, for CSV import process, read the guide for API, see the article here. And this is how to automatically do it. Just go to your account, click on API management, create the API and create it. And then they're just gonna pop in right here. So every type of one, like Coinbase is pretty simple. You just click on connect your Coinbase account, ask you for your username and password, and it just pulls all your data in. Coinbase Pro, again, API key. How do you do that? You click on this guide, it does that. Will be global, which was a real pain, and I'm still going through that with them. Um, Huobi stopped uh, servicing uh, US customers, so when I clicked on the global file guide, it tells you exactly what to do. Unfortunately, Hobie Global will only allow you to generate and export your trade history from the past four months. So what you gotta do is send them an email at support. Here's the subject, here's the message, and then you get the CSV file and plug it into the data parts. And you click next. And this has already been done. I'm still waiting for Huobi because they suck. And then this I just leave as default, click next. And here's all of my different transactions. And remember, I've had a ton. This is all the way back from 2017. So I've bought a lot, like I told you guys before. So there may be this thing called missing data has been detected. What is that? So out of all the data, out of my hundreds of trades, there's four that they couldn't find. And why is it? Because it's through Huobi. So Huobi, I'm going to work with them. If it can't be, I'll talk to my CPA and say, hey, there's four transactions I can't find. Uh, shouldn't be a big deal. I'm 99% there. So what are you going to do? And uh, yeah, and it makes it super simple. So what happens here? We're going to create a report. And here I have my 2019, 2018, 2017. Let's view the report for 2017, just see what I got. So hey, net gain 5,000, not too bad. Trades were 45, I'll take it. But it has every single different type of trade here. It's got your long term, your transactions, which if you're a miner, it's going to you know uh, calculate those things. End of year, if you have any theft, you can put that in there. An audit trail, I think audit trail is great for your CPA because it has all the information there of the time, the date, the size, the how much you spent, and everything that you need is all right there. And then lastly, they have this thing called tax loss harvesting. So what exactly is that? So Crypto Trader also puts out a lot of different content to educate you, which I really appreciate. So this was the ultimate guide to tax loss harvesting. You can find this, just click on the blog at the very uh, top and they have a bunch of different things to go over. Very simple, easy to read stuff. So what is tax loss harvesting? It's the practice of selling a capital asset at a loss to offset capital gains. And that's pretty much it. So if I wanted to do that, if I wanted to sell my 2.4 Bitcoin that I had in 2017, I could actually have a realized loss of $11,000 if I want to do that. I don't want to do that. 
but it's an option out there for you, especially if you have those uh, small cap coins out there. You're like, I'm not going to use this. So you can just sell those. You can take a loss and you can offset your gains if you had to sell things. Now, there was a time that I had to sell a couple of uh, rounds of cryptocurrency for taxes and and uh, I did take a loss, but I'm not going to take one for 2017 or 18. Eh, 19, we'll see. But this year, not selling anything. That's just how it is. So again, if you want to take a look at the, these reports, I mean, everything is right there. Um, you have everything that like in one centralized place and you can just zip them over to your uh, accountant if you have one or you can just download it and follow them yourself if you're one of those do-it-yourselfers. I personally, I just clicked on this button right here, invite your tax professional. And what's great about that is you just click here and you can put in you know your name the tax pro name tax professional email i sent it over to her and uh, she took a look at everything she had a couple questions and then off we go so that's the simplest way to do it that i have found and let me tell you it saved me a ton of time and a ton of heartache and this is why i'm recommending many to you trust is a currency you cannot buy and i trust these guys uh, seems like it's a pretty good thing. And again, I feel like taxes are a necessity, not something I want, but something I need to do. This is what I recommend and you get 20% off. So, hey, why not? Also, if you don't have a, a CPA that's really up to speed with everything, there's you got two options. Uh, first of all, if you go on the tax professional suite and click on there at Crypto Trader, uh, at the very bottom here, there is a, uh, it says need a refresher on crypto taxation. This is for, you can send this, you can download it and send it to your CPA so they can be up to speed. If you don't have a CPA and you're like, you know what, I don't really have anybody. I don't really, you know, I didn't really think I need one, but maybe now you're thinking of it that you do. And let me be cl crystal clear. Um, crypto trader is a pretty simple process, but you know, there's always going to be somebody out there that says, you know what, I just want a little more uh, hand holding or guidance or whatever else you need. So there was uh, Matt Slack reached out to me. He is a CPA. He found me on, he, he's watched the videos. Uh, his firm is, uh, they are more geared towards blockchain. And if you notice one thing about, uh, so for the services, uh, if you click on that and go all the way down to the site content, they are, they are specializing in blockchain, digital assets, and cryptocurrency taxes. And they say, contact us today to set up a free crypto tax consultation. Taxpayers from all jurisdictions welcome. And I will link uh, Matt's website in the description of this video. So you can, if you need that, go right ahead. But let me state again, crypto trader is pretty simple to use. Just saying. All right, and that's it. I know it was a bit longer, but there's a lot of things to go over. I would like to say thanks to all my subscribers. I really appreciate it. Also, the supporters. So, level ones, appreciate you guys. Level two, shout out to All Right Soft, Wen Mullet, myself, who else? Dave Plummer, Grant Sharman, Bruce Wood, Baking Benjamins, Noel Flippin' Vegas, Martin Lewin, Michael Ralph, William Howell, Crazy Crypto Cronuck, Tessie Rice, Psyche Positive, Fire Swing Golf. JC Durex, Crypto Veritas, John Miller, The Office, El Merg, Michael Jeffrey, The Kell Show, Mage Research, and finally, Terry Prospery, XRP Carolina, whatever, AE, and our new one, Hero Soap Company. And just so you know, um, scam alert, uh, my email is dandigitaless at news at gmail.com, not digital, Dan Digital Asset New at Gmail. Someone is using that to uh, scam people out of their harder money, so don't fall for it. All right, thanks a lot, and I'll see you on the next one.